baggers, it's Bertie Bagger here. What day is today? It's Sunday the 23rd of May 2021 and we're on our way to fish in the National Pairs Championship Qualifier being held on the Shropshire Union Canal, the good old Shroppy. Bit of our local water for me and me mate, it's a pairs match. Uh, and it's been held on section from Goldston, Wharf of Goldston, which is Bridge 55, towards in the Saudley area, Bridge 51. So anybody locally, it's the Wharf of Goldston to the Honesty Box section. They're all Hodnet Angling Club's waters. Which uh, they kindly share out to my club, the Ordco Angling uh, Club in Newport, Shropshire. So we've had a bit of a do on there over the winter, and it's been quite good fishing, to be honest. Uh, we had a few practice days up there f for the start of our club series match a few weeks ago, and it was good. And then when we actually fished a match, it wasn't brilliant. Only five pound won it on the day when we'd been having double figure bags in uh, in the winter practice sessions well hey oh that's fishing and the weather has been up and down with them frosty nights and warm in the day and now all the rain over the last couple of weeks we'll go and have another look today uh, odd that themselves they had their 50th year anniversary festival on there fortnight ago uh, and again, 100 anglers turned up and two blokes on the end pegs actually pegged 99 and 100 on the day. They had eight and a half pound, eight and four I think one was, and eight something the other. And then there was a couple of six pounders, a couple of five pounders, and then I'd say 50% didn't weigh, probably because they just chucked them back so they knew they didn't have enough. But the majority, the medium weight was about between one and three pounds, it was, wasn't great at all. Uh, and the reason I'm fishing this, to be honest, is because me and my mate Tony Austin, my pair for the day today, we both used to work, well he still works there, at the Cadbury's factory at Knighton. Now, uh, Knighton Foods, we were in our local, the club there on site, three, what, three years ago, would have been 2018. We were having a pint, we saw all these blokes there using the club as a base and I saw Terry Nutt who I know and I asked him and I said what's going on here Terry and he explained it was the national qualifiers and uh, so me and we made Tony we thought come on we need to have a go at this, it's on our bit of a local stretch surely we can have a go with these big guns. Uh, so yeah we had a go, we had to for the crack really to see what it was like, see how we get on. In 2019, it would have been. Uh, unfortunately, Tone did nothing really. But I had a good day. I was up at Shepton, just up from the wharf of the factory on the bend, if anybody knows it, between the factory and the Shepton wharf. And I did nine, I think it was nine pounds six, and it was enough for fourth overall out of, I think there was 157 pairs that day, 14 overall. Not a good, not a bad day. But uh, the best bit about it, and what I like doing with my fishing, is it's a sign of my age as well. I'm getting on, so I don't want to be carrying all these, all this tackle to my, to a peg. I've never been, I've never been a materialistic type, so all the gear, no idea, because that's what it is. It's filled with all these sponsored lads, bless them, who come down with the. I don't know, I think they bring everything by the kitchen sink, just chuck it on their trolley, all sponsored by, you know, all the main manufacturers. So I make a point of not bringing much at all, as little as possible, and I carry it all just to make it look a bit more unprofessional. And, uh, yeah, some of the responses I was getting at the end of the match, when I, the one I come for, great and that's what I like about it. Having the cracks trying to show them up. We're proper anglers, proper canal people so you don't want to be going with all this gear. 
10 top kits for God knows how many different swims we're going to fish. Big buckets, 200 kilo, half hundred weight of ground bait we're going to launch in. Uh, that's not what it's about, especially up on these sections on the Shroppy. I always found from experience you don't want to be putting much bait in. Very little, not even little and often, just little. So we're off on our way to the draw, which is in Market Drayton today at the Weather Spoons, the Hippodrome. Don't know why it's there to be honest. It used to be at the Castle at Bletchley, but they moved it for some reason, not a problem. It's a bit of a problem when <laughs> you've got to go back there if you do do any good today. But you won't mind it then if you if you know you've done well. Uh, so I'll have me McDonald's breakfast and a cup of tea, and I'll see you at the draw. Hey up, baggers! Right, we've just done the draw at Weatherspoons in Market Drayton. I didn't bother filming in there because it was a bit crowded, even though it's a big pub, to be fair. And uh, so. I have drawn Ace 41, Peg 41 on the A section, which I'm not too clear where it is to be honest. I think it's up in Stockwood off Bridge 53, but I'm not too sure till I get there and to see where he's pegged it on the Telegraph pylons. Uh, and my partner Tony's drawn B14. Peg 14 on the B section, which I reckon is right down by the wharf at Goldston, between Bridge 55 and 56. So I'm trying to get going quick because where I am, and in Stockwood, you can fit about three cars in the parking on the bridge. You can guarantee it'll be absolutely round. I'll be struggling to find somewhere to park in a minute, but hey ho. Uh, so I'll get there, get me kit to the peg, and then we'll have a look when we get to the peg. See you later, baggers. So here we are, baggers. We're at the peg. We're on A41, A section, peg 41. There's a nice cup of tea. Right by bridge 54, the dead bridge. So I've got an end peg, baby. Quite happy with the draw. I've got a boat in front of me, which is nice. Those of you who know me, know I only fish with my edge monster pole. <laughs> which raises eyebrows when I come to the canal. It makes it more funny when I beat these canal specialists. As you can see, end peg. Really nice and quiet. Just past the wood, what we call in stock wood, next to this little bit of, of a plantation here. I preferred the wires to be honest, pegs 31 and 32. They are the flyers you always tend to produce. but I'm happy. There's quite plenty of colour in the water, secluded with all these trees around. I'm in a bit of, we're in a bit of a dip here, so the wind's going over our heads. You can see the canal, not much wind here. It starts to get it there on peg 40 next to me. There's a bit of a tow on the water, heading towards the Goldston end, the bridge end. Going from right to left as I look at the canal. So, not bad. All in's not till 11 o'clock, and as normal, I'm always probably the first to set up, first to pack away because I don't fish with much, don't give myself too many options. I feel that's what some of these big boys do, they make a mistake by fishing too many swims, too many options, that's just why they bring all the gear. Ten, 10 top kits to fish every square inch of the canal and it doesn't work on here to be honest just give yourself two sometimes three swims it's more than enough I find um, 
So what I'll do, I'll lock the camera up to me chest pouch, but my joey pouch. Hopefully it gives a good view of the match throughout the day. I'll have a look at the baits and have a look at the couple of rigs I've set up. Being a bit baggers. Right then baggers, let's have a look through the kits I've done today, the rigs. So, the main rig. We'll start on this one first. So, this is going to be the inside line. I came up, something new I've been starting to do, fish to hand off this inside line. So all I'm going to fish is my top two. fish to hand for a quick bit of speed fishing and some lovely gudgeon in here and some nice ropes you can pick them up on the inside and I'm going to feed this inside with a bit of start off just bringing a few pinkies in little and often on the inside so the rig today let's have a look so start off with lovely 4 by 10 pencil float super delicate nice and sensitive just what we want shot it right down to the black tip it'll show a black tip and a bit of orange there on it's on about what's it on two and a half pound line which is what about oh oh twelve you might think it's a bit heavy and it is because I always tend to fish a bit heavier here because you want to hook when you're fishing a pairs match in these national championship pairs matches you want to make sure you land these fish if you get on a bonus bream skimmer or a nice perch and, or maybe even a nice chub if we're lucky so it's coming down so we've got that dotted down with three number nine shot styles in a small bunk bulk sorry coming down to an 0, 0, 010 hook length again pretty heavy with a size 20 hook with a number 10 dropper so we'll get it down pretty quick with that bit of a bulk I'm just going to flick it out in front dr drag it back drag my tip under the water sink that line quick for any bit of speed fishing. There will come a point when in the match where we have to come onto here a couple of times just to rest that main swim. Uh, you can soon add to the weight. Keep fish going in your net even if they're two couple of ounces. And on this elastic I fish number four bungee again. Too thick really but when you land a nice perch or a nice skimmer off the inside you can quick swing them in so my main swim again a 4 bungee fishing with a 0.3 gram Garbolino DC32 float again nice and sensitive put an extra piece of silicon there to be honest under the body remember for next time Again, this is gonna on this I'm gonna start fishing the chop worm and only chop worm, no ground bait, no casters, and I want it to get down there quick. I'm just gonna go over and have a look, see what's about. Well this is gonna act as two rigs because I don't mess about setting up another rig. So I'm gonna fish over there on the bread, which is shorter, it's only about two and a half foot over there. And the main swim's gonna be there hit by them boat doors and I'm going to fish the chop worm over there so we're just touching bottom to start with I might go up to 3 inches, 3 or 4 inches over depth if it's towing really hard it is towing a bit right to the left but we'll have a look again coming down through an 010 hook length again with a size 20 hook Camazon B511 with two number 
this end rockers. That's my William rig, and all I'll do is go over onto the other line, which is going to be there. I'm going to fish sloppy bread and uh, bread punch to start with. And that tends to fizzle out quite quickly on the bread punch. Or if you do manage to keep them going, they are only tiny blades, which uh, isn't really good. So I tend to go on to a pinky. So I'll try that after and fire a few pinkies over. All I'll do then is drag that down to here, boat tip, tip of the boat, down to here, and I'll string my shot out along there. So we get a nice slow fall through the water, try and catch anything that's swimming about. If it's fishing hard, the old negative approach, but we're going to start off positive on this bolt worm rig. I love fishing the worm, we well, might not catch as many, but that's where it goes and you get a nice pound perch, pound plus perch, skimmers. The other, when I fished it the other year, 2019, uh, Landed two nice bream, three pound, three pound a piece. Yeah, I need something decent to bring them in. So on the bait. See that chop worm. Fluoro pinkies, nothing major. Got squat in there, no I haven't. Bread slot in there. Squat in there, won't bother getting them out yet. Take them all in. A few casters. Put in there. A bit of sensors black and a bit of sensors lake because I like the crushed end particles in there. Only slightly wetted. Make that into a ball, lovely. But again, I won't be feeding much of that. I'm not going to start off with that. It's only once it dies off on the worm line, I might try a ball of honey. Just to try and bring some back and feed over that bed of ground bait. But again, anything more than a golf ball size, they don't, they don't tend to like it. So that's the start up, that's the set up. We'll see how we get on today. Me and my partner Tony, he's drawn B14. It's only the other side of the bridge, 14 pegs up, so we're quite close to be honest. It's looking nice. Not too bad temperature wise, quite warm. Uh, few bolts of air. Come back on when it's the all in at 11 o'clock. See you later. Right. Seconds to go. There we go. All in. So let's get this worm rig out. So, size 20 up, B511. Start off on a small bit of worm, I do like fishing big bits to be honest. Let's see what's about first. Don't want to be too selective in the fish. As you can see, just a bit of chop worm in the end. I like it when I've got a natural pole roller with the hedge and the bushes behind. So there you are, look, straight out with a cooking kit. Next door to me, big balls of ground bait. Bit lad, you fill it in. Oh, I just can't get a bit of on it. So, we're about what? A metre off the boat. Hold it there for a bit. Let's 
slopes too high. Josh when I tried it. I'm not fishing too far up the shelf. Third one so far. Bring it in. I think we've just got that float down. tip on here when you do have a boat go through don't go out and refeed straight away let it all settle a lot of anglers make the mistake you go out straight away so I'll just put another number 11 at the bottom of that bulk on these pencil floats. One minute it's sticking in like a light out of the water, the next minute put a tiny style on and it's dotted right there. Let's see what that looks like. thinking I should be fishing to my left on this line and go with the flow of the cut. Not a bit of way up. I won't put any more weight on it just yet, in case that weir brings the float down because it's a lot bigger than the last piece. Fish within the first five ten minutes. 
if there's any lurking about. I'll put a bit of back shot on there as well in a minute. Oh, that worm hasn't pulled float down, so we need to dot it down a bit more. Just bring it in, drop that down a bit more. <sighs> Settle better there. Just let it drop through for the first ten, fifteen minutes. I'll start holding it there.
destroy all of them, don't they? Definitely want a back shot on it. started to pick up now. The water's not too bad but it's pushing on the pole a bit as you can see. So we're fishing there, this worm rig is just about a foot up the shelf. Don't want fishing in the trap because that's where all the crap gets on the bottom. I tend to find the ropes and skimmers and the perch patrol along that uh, that channel just above the shelf. Start it further back. Let it fall. to him started off straight down the track fishing towards me not getting many not getting any indications over here we have got a persevering worm I'm not one to chop and change quick I like to give each method a good go Whereas if you're on commercials, you perhaps do a bit of dobbing about with a bit of bread, see what's about. And then target your approach to that, but... Obviously there's not much feed on it, when you put a couple of worms in. Nothing major. Every time we put some in, every 10 to 15 minutes, we'll start building up a better worm on the bottom. And it should pick up after. Right next to me, he's had a couple of small ropes to start with. It's going through a lot quicker there, so it's not up. Just going along that shelf. Stick up the shelf a bit, a couple more inches. So it holds a bit. There we are. Slows it right down.
one more go through, just up that shelf a bit further. And we'll put a back shot on. And put a bit more wind. Don't want to put any casters in with it because casters haven't been working along here for a good few months now. Not for me anyway. Or any of the club anglers. Don't know what they were fishing on in the in stock festival the other week, fortnight ago. I haven't heard much from them. straight now because it goes there. Down. Catches the bottom there, proper. Must just come up a slight touch. Right, one more. Be that line between the float and the tip. about coming. Number five of the day. So I was going to put some bait in. But I'm not going to bother now. I'll wait till this boat set. Just to see it be safe. Alright. Look at this big swimming eye. So I'll wait till he goes past. this idiot do
jumped overboard. So we can see an old swim up. Pedestrians coming as well now. Can't get any better. Right. <laughs> Just a shame when the children are driving the narrowboat. across the bloody canal to collect the dog that jumped off. Shot on, it's brought the float dotted down quite nice. Boat traffic still pulling it. Still hang off on that feed. See, if 
got a ball in it stuck. All that ground bait and wheel and whatever else I'd have fed into the other swings. They'd have been a waste and been spread all over the bottom of the canal now. Oh, here we go. Indication there. Already thinking about putting a bit of bread out on the tip of that boat. Now I know that it's lived on. People are on it. I should have had the heater on last night because it was a bit chilly. Some fish might be right up next to that boat. seems to have stopped. Start feeding this pinky line on the inside. Eat them pinkies here, innit? Some more wheels. I'm going to leave it. Go on to that bread. There's no boat traffic coming. So we'll leave that now, come off there. So we'll go on this bread. Go on this bread line. Get that pinky here in. So we'll just bring it. Hmm. What have we got here, lad? Oh dear. I don't know what's going on there. Probably all the way down with any indication. Wait on the ground properly. Hmm. That back shot made it spin round there. Let's see if I can get that off. We'll put it right up out of the way. I had already got a back shot on. Right, hang on, man. Because I've just realised that, I'll just hang off on that bread line a second. Just in case I'm fishing above their heads because of that tangle. The paint door. I've already potted in, so you don't need to put any more in. I'll go back and have a look over that. A bit of wear. Thread it on up this shank. Cover it up. Nobody's having much. Nobody's having much at all. I need to.
so, an eventful opening 20 minutes or so. Three or four boats. There's a nice boat. A stranded dog on this tote. Broadside boat. So they are there. I was just tangled up around the base of the throat. And I was fishing a couple of inches above the head. Go with this. That's a good sign. Chunky weight will be He's got a bit good half a pound. Remember, this is four bungee that's the last one. And here's the perch. Nothing major, but nice nonetheless. He's already spat the up for me, nice lad. Oh, come here, mate. Same as my one I had. Half a pan. Don't like it when there's no tail, I like a bit of tail. Get better pull more positive bites as well where the fish grab at it. Get a good indication on the float.
windy day, tip of the boat. Slide that back shot back down here. Keep the line tight between the end of the bolt up and the float. slower close to that boat. Oh, that's a good thing or a bad thing really. Probably better presentation. Leaving it in the kill zone for longer. strung out for over here but we've just had that indication in a fish already we'll just hang fire here on the Shropshire Union we do think that the 
Gudrun record could go. Boston fish out here. I think the record's five ounces or something. And you'll see, there's some, you can get a nice three, four ounce Gudrun. Nicely settled. Better presentation over there, I think. But it's just a small stamp of fish. Feed a bit of bread swap this time, and had four fish on that pot. And the size of your thumbnail, nothing more. Nice to be getting a bit wetter. Wipe the snout. Screaming out the shot in pattern. Give it a slower fall through the water. On this punch. Let's be 
course this bread's not showing at all really which is very unusual for here punch does well on here could be a day where we have to alternate the swims a bit quicker when I was looking at the bridge I thought I heard a boat coming, missed the bite Probably day where we need to alternate the swims a bit better, take a couple off a swim and then rest it going to somewhere else and then keep coming back instead of sitting on one for a long time. It's, they're still there, still having the odd bite, here we go. There we go. Not in bed now. again on the bread punch. He's in again next to me. What's he got? gonna try it. It's not fast enough on the bread so I'm gonna try it with a pinky on over the bread slot. Hopefully those have been going well. So we'll have a look at that. Again, finger finger full of slot. Back it. Leave the pinkies on the inside. a bit of worm again in a minute. I haven't seen any, apart from the lad next to me, I haven't seen anybody else catching. I can only can only see two others. Time now is well, it's ten past two. So an hour ago, one o'clock. I've had a bit of a reset. Nothing was really happening. So I went over to my left. I wasn't happy with that wound rig swim. I wasn't getting any good presentation. So I've gone over towards where that white slab ends. And the same depth. Worm rig. And I was having a couple of good indications straight away. And I put a ball of game bait in as well. I thought to see if that, that'll help bring them off. And I had an indication straight away. And I had a good bite and I had a perch about four or five ounces. And I put back in again after wait about ten minutes. And I had a half bite, a bit of a bob. Lifted into something decent as a, as a skimmer, they come off straight away. Go to do with a decent sized skimmer. Had another putting, and, uh, and 
another good bite and lifting in it is a nice size with about a pound and a half. So I've sat on that now for another good 20, 25 minutes and nothing. Um, the boat come there, knackered that lad, swim up, reversing and getting into position. And I've another three boats in straight after. They've all woke up after their dinner and they we had the Sunday lunch in the back out again there. So I'm going to feed in there, another ball of ground bait, a bit of castor and worm, leave that and just go back over here onto the thread for a minute and see what we get. Battery died on my phone so it is plugged up to a charger. So I'll let it charge a bit more and then I'll put it back on my chest arm. See how that goes, I'll see you in a bit. Right, we're into the last hour. And I haven't put a fish in the net in the last hour. This wind has absolutely killed it. You cannot get the presentation. Bread line hasn't done anything today. Nor with any pinky. So we're just going to sit on this worm line over here to my left. It's the only bit of chance you've got. Is that the right? Yeah. It's the only chance you've got of holding your pole properly. Been kept, I kept feeding it, but no, no indication. Three inches on the bottom, I did shallow up to just touching bottom. Right against the door of the boat, nothing, you can't, can't hold your pole whatsoever. It just fires through the swim. We're just going to sit on this the last hour and hope the summit has a nibble. We must have had another ball of ground bait. It's only a one handed ball, so you can get a bit bigger than a golf ball and a bit of chop worm and caster. But this, uh, Wind. It's bloody cold now. And another three or four boats through as well. Don't think anyone's caught much around me. No. I don't know what they've done on the wires. You can see four blokes from my peg who's on a bend. But, uh, and I really had the best of starts, did we? A couple of clowns on a narrow boat chasing the dog up the towpath, so he decides to swing the back end of the boat over. Check the depth of it. Swing the back end of his boat over, over to the canal side. So obviously you know how they do that. Stick the bloody rudder to the one side, rev the bollocks out of it, churn all the side up, churn all the water up. While he was doing this, his front end of the boat's right in front of me, so I'm sat here waiting for him.
back to three inches over depth. And I'll fish with this. I'll keep filming until uh, the battery dies again on this. And then I'll back up and I'll stick my spare battery in. Ready for the way in. See you back at the old light. See you later, baggers. Well, about three or four minutes left. I've sat on this for an hour. Not a sniff. Not a sniff. Everybody else has had the same idea and they just sat on the one for the swim for the last hour. There's absolutely nothing to show you. It's fished very bad today. Disappointing, really. Interesting to see what others have got off the flyers. Let's see how it compares to Odnitz Festival they had the fortnight ago. I said only eight pound one that. I'll be lucky if I got two pound. I think there's only five or six in a section. Tone's pulled something out the bag. We'll be having another go at Shebden in a few weeks' time. There's nothing's going to have a chew on this in the last minute. It hasn't bothered for the last couple of hours. I'll put a fish in the net for two hours. I've shallowed it up a bit just so it's dragging along the bottom. And it made a difference. No signs, no bubbles, nothing showing on the shallow. Just disappointing all round, really. But, nice day out. We're done with a bit of sunshine because it's pretty chilly in this wind. Just uh, wait for this all out. Any minute now. Go on, berry. All out! All right. We'll pack up and I'll see you later. Right. We're on 41. Two blokes up here in the section, 42 and 43. The boat next to me reckons he's got about two, two and a half pound. Probably the same as me, probably a bit more. The boat next to him's been catching little ones all day, fishing the squat, nothing big. 
there. Probably not even enough for the section today, but you never know. <coughs> Weigh it in anyway. So it's all fish bad, there we go. It's just shut off the last two hours. It's not just me then, which is a plus, I suppose. There they come. Big one minute, you've sat Two five four. Two five four. 